Hello, everybody, and welcome to TeacherCast, your home for all things professional development. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today on the TeacherCast podcast. There's, of course, several great ways that you can reach out to us and be a part of our show. We love it when you find us on, on Twitter, at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at TeacherCast.net. And, of course, subscribe to this and all of our shows over on TeacherCast.net slash iTunes and TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. And welcome back to our show. We are so happy to have you today. Today we're talking to Amazon Education, specifically a great educator named Miro, who's here to talk about a great website called WithMathICAN.org. I know out there as an educator, you've been listening to kids say things like, I'm not good at math, or my favorite, I don't do math good. And maybe you have that same reservation for doing math. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about a pledge that you and your educators and your students can take to help provide a little bit of motivation for learning math. I want to bring Mira onto the show today. Mira, how are you today? Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I am so glad that you are here today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and some of the work that's going on at Amazon Education. Absolutely. Um, I was an educator oh, almost two decades ago now, uh, taught elementary school for a few years and um, found that I was really passionate about curriculum development and from there sort of moved into publishing. Uh, and I worked at um, several small and large companies developing uh, curriculum for uh, primarily elementary grades in uh, math and English language arts. Um, and for the last 10 years, once the internet became a real thing and, and something that seemed like it was going to stay, uh, I moved into ed tech um, and have been now at uh, 10 marks uh, for about four and a half years. We'll talk to and, us. Uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I, I'll, I'll pause right there. So talk to us a little bit about 10 marks. We know that it's an Amazon company, but most of us think of Amazon as that company where you buy shoes from that gets delivered by drones. What is 10 marks? Drones, we aspire to that. Um, so 10 marks is uh, an online math program uh, for uh, grades one through algebra two. Um, we have been around for about six years, but um, I would say our, um, our, our, product is about three years old in the market. We launched in 2013 with a design from the ground up with the Common Core uh, product uh, purely to help uh, educators in classrooms reinforce what they're teaching. So something that can um, be a, a support to educators as they try to develop conceptual understanding uh, of math. And when math teachers look at 10 marks and look at the site we're going to talk about here with mathican.org what can they expect to find what, what what do you have as far as resources for teachers absolutely uh first if you don't mind i'd just like to talk about how the idea of with math i can came out of the work that we've been doing at 10 marks and then i'll jump into the resources so uh, you know we as i said we've been out for over three years with this product in the market and we've just heard so much from having visited schools and from talking to teachers about you know both from teachers and from students in their classes using that phrase of i'm not good at math i'm not a math person and sort of taking the cues from these teachers and from these students is what um, was, was sort of the, the, the birth of this idea. And um, as an Amazon company, we, we felt that, you know, we um, could uh, be this voice out there that uh, brings broader awareness to the fact that, uh, you know, this is how 50% of young adults are thinking of themselves is that they can't be a math person. Um, so that's that's where the idea came from. Uh, and we launched this campaign in early February. Uh, and we're going it's going to be live for uh, as long as it takes to reach every child and adult uh, uh, to uh, get them to uh, take the pledge, uh, which really says that, you know, they're going to embrace more of a growth mindset uh, with the, uh, the thought that, um, you know, math learning math is like learning a language that it's a process of learning and that um, all of us can understand uh, those concepts and don't need to be intimidated by it the website of course is with math and of course the hashtag is with math I can tell us a little bit about this pledge what actually did it take to put together and how did it all come about the pledge uh, we, we put the preliminary wording together here uh, um, at the 10 marks team we have a lot of educators on staff who had uh, input um, then we took the, the initial wording out to our partners. So, you know, um, 
uh, NCTM uh, uh, sort of helped uh, helped us tweak it further. So did Joe Bowler, um, as well as uh, the first few districts that actually signed on uh, to, to to commit to this pledge. Uh, specifically, Christy Garnier at Beaumont uh, and Tara Beans at Edison School District in in New Jersey. So all of them contributed to to the wording of the pledge. Um, and uh, uh, that was one question. You had you had another question, and and it just slipped my mind. So let's get down to the bottom of all of this. When we're looking at math and we're looking at students struggling in math, that then becomes mm -hmm. adults struggling in math because we've all seen the parent that says, you're on your own, I don't know pre-algebra. Yep. When does this start? When do we start to find that math is difficult? Is it mm -hmm. preschool? Is it grade school? Is it middle school? At what point do kids just say, I'm not, I'm not a math person, why do this stuff? Well, I, I, you know, there, there's a lot of research, and I'd say that it probably starts at the point where your your first struggles start. Uh, you know, it, 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 it could be as early as third and fourth grade when you start, you know, uh, in uh, learning fractions, and it could be there. Um, but uh, and on the home front, I've read research that talks about uh, how parents struggle to help their kids past the fifth or sixth grade, and now with uh, Common Core and the new strategies and and sort of the whole. Um, need for students to have to think about different strategies and to have to explain their thinking. I think, uh, as uh, you know, speaking for myself personally, I mean, I learned uh, very much uh, in the, the sort of the algorithmic style. You plug in numbers, you you invert and multiply, and I, you know, until I was uh, in my 30s, I didn't really understand why I was doing these things. So I think for for some of us, it becomes difficult to help our children at home with their homework when the homework is asking them to explain why they're doing what they're doing. Um, so I'd say the struggle, it, it really varies uh, the point at which it begins uh, for each individual. Is it in, in your mind or in, in, you know, with your organization, is it the curriculum that needs to get updated for 21st century? Is it the teaching methods? Is it more students have access to calculators so we can just get it done without having to do long division? What kinds of things are we looking to change to make Great. learning math more motivated. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but how do we motivate our kids to pick this stuff up? Because you're right, it is a essential part of coding and it's essential part of music and it's essential part of science. And what can we do here? Uh, I think that's the $64,000 question. Uh, and, and at 10 marks, we're, we're trying to crack that very nut. And, and as I speak, I'm sure thousands of teachers uh, are, are also trying to crack that very nut. Uh, there's definitely a piece here that starts with, you know, teacher training, uh, which is which is very good. Uh, but as we're, we're we have different expectations of what students need to graduate with, I think we also need to arm teachers uh, with the skills to be able to impart that education to students. Uh, some of it uh, is is I think you know we do try to cram a lot into our school year. We only have a what on average about 180 days in the school year. Um, you know, why don't we go deeper in few concepts and get kids to really um, embrace that, give them the time to explore through project-based learning or hands-on learning. You know, every day my daughter's, you know, is telling me about how the classes that she enjoys the most um, are, are where she uh, where she can engage in discovery, where there's trial and error, where there's room to make those mistakes and, and uh, for those mistakes to be embraced in, in, in learning. So. I'd say that you know a, a change is already happening. I mean, the Common Core was implemented. Uh, several states are still in the process uh, of that implementation. They're in the process of recognizing that their teachers need more uh, more time to uh, understand how best to impart this knowledge to their students. At the same time, they're also having to learn how to you know incorporate technology into the classroom. So I read something a couple of days ago about how uh, the need for professional development for teachers. Just using technology and in integrating technology into the classroom has become a, a, a big business. Uh, so there, there's 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 a lot of change that needs to happen at a lot of levels, uh, and and it's a it's a matter of uh, I think time before it's able to pervade uh, all the aspects. So it starts I'd say very much with teacher training, with providing great materials for teachers and students. You know, you know, I I don't think that there's a doubt that says having technology in the classroom makes educating students easier but would you say that having technology in the classroom is making educating students about math easier and i'm coming at that from a question of i 
I'm in the position to work a K to 12 district. I, I, I have a chance to help math teachers a lot. The feedback that I get is it's just really difficult to do, you name it, Google Docs, apps, whatever, because teachers aren't trained in how to find those. I mean, there's a lot of great resources out there of GMath and Desmos and all those amazing math things. And I agree that PD is out there, but is technology actually getting in its own way because we're trying to do things at a 21st century level and sometimes we might just need to go back to basics with kids? Uh, that's a great point. I mean, this brings the SAMR model to mind. I think in some places we're just using it as, as a substitution. Uh, but at the same time, I think that there are, you, we have to figure out what plays to, to, to how to play the technology strengths, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the homework that we assign to our students, if there's an aspect of the technology that can help grade something quickly for you, so you don't, as a teacher, have to spend that time, but instead you're just looking at the data that's given to you by the technology product, so your lesson the next day can be informed by it, mm -hmm. I think that's a win. So I, I think it's really, the, I think this is why, um, you know, uh, there, there are the, the technology specialists in schools who are helping teachers figure out how best to integrate it so it doesn't just become a, a, a substitution. You, 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 want, you want that evolution. For those math teachers that are listening to this, and, you know, I, I'm looking at right now, I'll give you the, the, the you know, in my district, we're, we're working on fractions. Mm -hmm. What resources do you recommend? Are there stuff on the sites as far as, you know, where to go? You know, again, I'm throwing out things like the GMAS and the Desmos, but where would you suggest math teachers go to get those resources that they need to bring into their curriculum? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do a plug here for the resources that we provide here uh, at Tenmarks, but there's uh, also a few others that I'd like to talk about. So we developed uh, about a couple of years ago, we launched a, a new product called Tenmarks Math Teach. Um, which was developed really with the goal of providing teachers with a complete view of every standard. I mean, we all know, and I know from having been a teacher myself, that you only have so many hours in the day and you can't spend hours researching to deeply understand everything. So we wanted to provide, uh, I wouldn't call it flip notes, but we wanted to provide in a synthesized, easy to use form, um, everything a teacher needs to know about you know, fractions uh, and a particular standard in fractions. So, Ten Marks Math Teach uh, does that. We provide resources from, um, you know, what is what is the standard actually expect a student to learn? What are the prerequisites for the standard? How do I assess if students are ready? What are the misconceptions they come in with? Um, as well as, uh, uh, you know, anywhere from five to ten different ideas on how to teach the different strategies in the classroom. Um, so we we provide that for each standard. Uh, absolutely, uh, everybody should take a look at it. Some other great resources, uh, especially talking about fractions. I think uh, Illustrative Math has some wonderful videos uh, that that um, are available uh, for for teachers to use, um, as well as uh, LearnZillion. You know, they they offer some uh, great videos that um, you know, I quite uh, honestly, I use sometimes when I'm trying to help my uh, seventh grader with uh, with her math. That, that great. that's amazing, and I'm certainly going to make sure that we put links to those resources on our show notes here um, for our teacher cast podcast. Now, let me just kind of wrap up here and, and kind of bring up a situation. Someone's going to be listening to this podcast or watching this podcast or coming to your website. And two things are going to happen. They're either going to sign the pledge and then they're going to go on with themselves mm -hmm. or they're going to say, well, signing the pledge isn't enough. I want to do more. I want to be active. I want to help out your organization or I want to lead the charge in my school. What can a teacher, parent or student do if they want to raise their hand and be that spark of hope for people in their district, town or community that want to be uh, better with math? For, uh, yes, we would absolutely love, uh, love uh, all the help we can get to spread the word. Uh, some suggest suggestions are uh, to share on social media, you know, whatever your reach is, is to um, talk to people about the fact that you and your students or your children at home have taken this pledge and, and here's how, uh, here's the impact that you're seeing. I think, I think what really helps make it personal is talking about how it has changed something for you in this moment, in this day, I, I, you know, it, it, it's, it's small steps that sort of lead us towards a, a greater change. So I think sharing by social media is a great idea. 
Um, we've had uh, schools that uh, have hosted, you know, assembly in the beginning of the day to share share it with, with more teachers. Uh, so definitely in, in staff development sessions, I think is a good time to, to share this as well. Um, also uh, at 10 Marks, we, we host a, a weekly ed chat. So, uh, you know, any teachers who are willing to host this, co-host this with us and has their unique point of view to share, we'd be uh, happy to have them uh, be hosts on these weekly uh, Thursday, I believe at 4.30 p.m. Pacific is when the chats happen. But absolutely reach out to us. We would love uh, more voices. Mir, this is all amazing stuff. I, I would love to have you come back on the show and, and share more great stories about the great things. The website is withmathican.org. Thank you so much for taking the time to share everything that's going on over at 10 Marks. We would love to have you back on the show. It would be my pleasure. Thank you for helping us spread the word. And thank you out there for joining TeacherCast, your home for professional development. There's, of course, several great podcasts that are available here. You can check out our TeacherCast app spotlight featuring the best in ed tech. You can, of course, reach out to our two new shows, Ask the Tech Coach and Educational Podcasting Today for all your podcasting WordPress needs. We're, of course, live every single Sunday night at 7 o'clock on the Tech Educator Podcast. And we love it when you reach out to us with topics such as these at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. You can leave us a voicemail and tell us what you you'd like to see on our show. Thank you so much for reaching out to us. My name is Jeff Bradbury. On behalf of everybody here, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.